Greetings. My name is Guy Dornsey. This is the show called Change the World, where I like to invite guests who share my passion for a very positive, determined, beautiful future. My guest today is Terry Mattin, Executive Director of the Couch and Housing Association. And you come to that with 20 years of, of previous experience in housing and social development, community development, and 30 years of living in the Couch and Valley, right? Yes, hi Guy, and thanks hi for there. inviting me. And we want to talk about this ginormous housing crisis that's going on. Yes. And how the ha Couch and Housing Association is can, you know, can, can help with a solution. So when you, when you, if, if you arrive from Mars and suddenly you're in Duncan Couch Valley, you come across this crisis, what would you be thinking? Well, um, Guy, you mentioned that I come from, you know, a, a long history of community and social development. Yes. And if I arrived from Mars yesterday and was looking at the housing crisis in the couch and region, I would say it, you know, it, it just makes sense that a healthy, sustainable community begins with the basics. And we know that in order for people to be healthy and to thrive and for our economy to, to thrive, we have to have, uh, you know, basic housing for everyone. Yeah. And so, um, as you know, and as uh, have, have been experienced by many communities across Canada, this crisis has been about 30 years right. in the making, um, starting with uh, federal divestment um, from yeah. affordable housing. So no money from provincial or federal government for 30 years, like, N let the market solve the problem? Provincial, yes, but federal, no. Okay. So not the same kind of investment in yeah. the last 20 years. Yeah. And, and also I think the mindset um, that uh, the market can just handle things. Yeah. Let's just let the market do well, it. But we know what that's done. We know what that's done. It hasn't worked out so the way that... So I gather that, that in the 1970s, in say the Couch and Valley area, or maybe you know, apart from Victoria, most of Vancouver Island, you could save for a down payment in five years. Yes. Now it takes 15 years for the same down payment, and in Vancouver it takes 27 years. And during that time of saving, it's gone through the reef even further. That's right. We're seeing we're seeing um, prices go up like other communities. Now, now a house in the average price of a house in uh, Couch and Region is is around five hundred thousand yes. dollars. That doesn't sound like much when you live in Victoria or Vancouver. Yeah. But if you live in Victoria or Vancouver, that sounds pretty good. And why wouldn't I move? Because to, you can sell your house for a million. Yes. Yes. So we're facing pressures um, of for ownership housing. Yes. And we're also facing uh, a lot of pressure and a lack of stock for rental housing. Right. Um, you know, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you were a young person just starting yeah. out, um, and particularly, well, I come from the baby boomer age, yeah. um, it was, you started out in rental housing and then saved up down payment and moved into yeah. ownership housing. We're not seeing that, that same trend anymore. Right. We're seeing millennials, yeah. um, it's, you know, stay in rental housing. So let me take a guess. If the other four ways in which the housing crisis shows up, there's obviously it shows up among the yeah. people who have to homeless entirely. Yes. And then the second, people who are couch surfing, sleeping in cars, sponging off, living with their parents when they're 40 years old. And then people who are struggling to find a place to rent and they really can't afford the rent. And then people who would love to buy a home and just can't afford to buy a home. Is that the four? Does that catch you there's something missing there? Yes, and if I could ask you to picture an iceberg where absolute homelessness yes. is at the very top and it's the tip yes. of the iceberg. The ones living on the street. The one, Individuals that. living on the street who, abs who, ca who do not have a roof right. over their heads, who depend and on that's shelters. That's visible, so you see that's them. That's the visible. The, the under part of that iceberg is hidden homelessness and, and yeah. inadequate housing. Right. Yes. And yes. people paying 50% of their income on rent. Yes. And therefore unable to buy the food because you've got to pay the rent, you've got to pay the hydro. Yep. It, we, when we look at some income levels in the Cowichan region, um, we're seeing people paying 60, 70, 80 percent of their oh. monthly income on rent. Last year, a colleague of mine moved from Vancouver to Duncan, and she put a thing on Facebook that she was so excited to find a three-bedroom house to rent for $2,500 a month. And I thought, yes. how can anyone pay that much in rent? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm aware of a, a new suite that just came on the market. Uh, it, was a, it was a secondary suite for $1,500 a month, one bedroom. One bedroom, yes. $1,500. Yes. It's just... So, yes. and with housing prices going up, I think it was 15% last year? 18% over two years. Wow, what over two years, was yes. it? Right. Yes. So, this shows about solutions, right? <laughs> about how we right. solve these horrible right. big problems. Right. And you, with your role with the Couch and Housing Association, are right at the center of helping to make things happen. We are. As I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, but Couch and Housing Association has come out of about 15 years of work 
firstly by Social Planning Couch and right. then the Regional Affordable Housing Directorate who create a Couch and Housing Association for this very purpose. Right. Our job is to um, take a look at, keep, a, keep an eye on um, uh, the research and data around housing yes. and then uh, do that research and be part of implementing solutions. Right. Yes. And how long has the Housing Association been going? We were created in 2015. So three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Prior to that, you've got the, the social planning department. Yes. Quite active, and so it's a quite. Yes. And who is member of the Housing Association? Is it organization or, or individuals? It's an organization. So it's yes. a nonprofit organization, um, an eight-member board. Okay. And uh, can individuals like myself become a member, or do I have? It's just other agencies that are. Members? We're still young, okay. and so we haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. Yes. Right now, we're an eight-member board. Right. Yeah. So now, when you look at what needs to happen, I mean, clearly, there are forces way out of our control affecting the market price. But in terms of the need for rental housing, what's what can be done? What needs to be done? What's the next big step? Well, the first thing I think that is important for us to say is we didn't get here overnight. This crisis, as I mentioned, was 30 years in the making. Yes. And we are going to have to work very hard um, over the next 10 years to make a dent in this issue. Yes. Um, one of the first things that we did when, when we started asking ourselves, how can we, how can we begin to address uh, a crisis of this proportion? Yes. We looked um, at other municipalities in BC and we looked to our neighbors to the north and south of us. Yes. And uh, both the Comox Valley Regional District and CRD had models that we were very interested in that seemed to be working and creating affordable housing. Yes. And so um, we, we brought together a community, we brought together our local elected officials, and we explored how these models could help us. Right. Um, and um, in particular, we looked at uh, the need for, because what we're seeing right now are, we have a federal government with a national housing yes. strategy, a provincial government yeah. with a 30-point plan, um, and we see um, dollars becoming available right. for affordable housing. What we, what we need are, is our local government involvement. Right. We need partners at the table and we need, um, as a community, we need to be working together from the very same page. And, and we for you, this means the, the Couch and Valley Regional District yes. and the City of Duncan and the North Couch and Shamanus and all that other? All of the above. Yes. I think it's really important to, for people to understand that that Cowichan is a region. Yes. And although we have four municipalities and nine yes. electoral areas, we're very inter interdependent. So we're all the way from Yellow Point down to Mill Bay, Ma Shawnigan, Malahat. out of the Malahat, yes. over Lake Cowichan Lake. Over Yubu, to the West Coast. Right over to the West Coast. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we're very interdependent. Mm. And no one sector, not local government, not one area, yes. not the nonprofit housing sector or the private development yes. sector can do this alone. We have to be working together. Working together and looking for innovative solutions. So what were the, the secrets that the Comox Regional Districts in Victoria did that made you admire what they were doing? Uh, one of the, both of those um, regional districts have now they have housing functions, housing right. services that are part of local government. CRD, of course, have been, has been doing this for years. So housing function sounds a bit jargony. What, what does it actually mean to have a housing function? Well, it means something different in, at, at, for every municipality. Yes. Um, it, for one municipality, it can be a housing reserve fund that is collected through taxation or yes. collected through amenity contributions, and that money can go towards seed funding for housing. Right. For the CRD, they actually have a ho whole housing department and um, do housing first, and uh, they have a housing management um, service. Okay. Uh, Comox Valley does it a bit differently. Right. Um, they have a taxation um, uh, function right. that collects money and um, and uh, a uh, coalition that makes recommendations for how those dollars. So there's should be a spent. contribution out of your municipal taxes that yes. goes towards uh, tackling the housing problem. Yes, yes, that's the that's the similar right. theme between the two. And areas. in the couch and up till now, there's just been a black hole where that sort of stuff is, right? That's right. Apart from the social planning department, which are Yes, and apart from, and I, and I should acknowledge um, that the District of North Couchin, however, has been quite active in okay. the area of affordable housing, yes. um, devoting lands, and, uh, and bringing together partners to get housing going right. in North Cowichan. Yeah. Um, but because we're a region, uh, we need to be thinking holistically, yes. and we need to be thinking about a whole government approach to Well, I certainly hear really good things about Victoria, but having the Regional Housing Trust for yes. the Capital Regional District has enabled them to put in, I think, $30 million, able, was it more than that, to put on the table? 
Yes, and over the past, um, you know, dozen or so years, um, I think what what really impressed me about that model was that uh, the the grants are awarded uh, based on a requirement for. Um, at least, uh, you know, a one to five return on investment. Right. And, and from what I understand, the CRD has seen a much higher return on investment. So that means for every, every, every if dollar. They put, if they put one million dollars on the table, there's another four million dollars additional or more? Yes. Yeah. Great. So yes. And so, and from what I understand, they've seen great success with that model. In and fact. that money then builds affordable rental complexes, apartments, yes. projects or whatever, right? Yes. So with the, the uh, Couch and Housing Association has yes. proposed a service that would, uh, that would be comprised of $750,000 a year. 80, about 83% of that yes. would be uh, directly related to getting affordable housing going um, and 500000 a year directly into yes. housing projects. Yes. Is this the money that the referendum vote is about to support That's right. paying contribution from... I'm a, I'm a Couch and Valley resident, so on my taxes I contribute into this? Yes. Okay. Yes. And there's a vote for that coming up? Yes, there's, uh, along with the municipal elections on October 20th, right. the CVRD has uh, decided to go to referendum with this question. And so if, if people are watching this and wondering like, well, how do, I'm a house own, homeowner, how does this affect me? How much money are we talking about for an average homeowner who saves houses half a million dollars you mentioned? Approximately $20 annually. So there about 20 bucks. I mean, yes. I'm, that's, that's, yes. That's nothing. That's four cups of coffee. It, well, but Starbucks coffees. <laughs> yes. Six bucks a chip. That's, that's hard. So that much, and with that money, you can pull it and start making a real difference. Yes. Um, you know, with, with a contribution of $500,000 a year, yes. if we think about uh, the success that's been realized in, in communities like the CRD, yes. Um, we, you know, we would hopefully be looking at at, at least a one to five or a one to ten return on that right. investment. So that would enable us to provide seed money to an affordable housing project and leverage funds, leverage those funds from provincial and federal so levels. So then, hopefully, between that would leverage between two and a half million and five million dollars worth of of building, plus all the yes. wage, and it's all going out in wages, basically. I mean, yes. you've got the builders, the plumbers, the electricians, the contractors, the painters. They're all earning that money locally, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we know that that housing construction is an economic driver. It's, yeah, yeah it's we also know that I, I, we, I hear by word of mouth that some employers, because of the cost of housing, they can't find staff because their staff can't find anywhere to live. That's right. It's, it's now become an economic concern. Yeah. Yes. When we're losing people because they can't find housing. And yeah. children who've grown up in the Couch and Valley who need somewhere to live, they're having to move away? Well, that's, you know, that when we, um, we just recently conducted a community survey, yes. we got just under 400 responses, and there were numerous stories of families who, um, who could not find, who could not stay in the Couch and Valley because of lack of housing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I see on my Facebook yeah. page where I have individual stories, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and it's, they come up constantly, someone saying, I'm, I'm being evicted because my apartment's being renovated. Please, can anyone help? Yeah. And so they're appealing and yeah. And instances where, for example, uh, we know that um, you know suites and homes are uh, you know a readily available form of rentals. However, they're not purpose-built rental housing. And if an owner decides to sell, then the renter can be evicted. Yes. Yeah. So stories like that. And that's well. one opportunity, I believe, when the owner, which is in fact the landlord, yes, the new one can put any price on the tenant on the property. They're not obliged to buy this two and a half percent or now four percent annual increase. I believe that with a new tenant, it's a, it's I think a whole that's different the case, question. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So yeah, a lot, yeah. you know, uh, many, many, many different instances and stories of uh, people who uh, yeah. we've heard of uh, many cam families who are, were camping through the summer, who were hoping to find a rental by September, yes. who are still camping. Camping where? In campgrounds, in oh. RVs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And now we've got the rains coming. Yes. I, I know of a, 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 a woman who's living south of Ladysmith in a, one of those old yeah. American RVs, the circular ones. They've got a famous name. What they, 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 like a, they like a space tube. Anyway, you know, I'm, I'm feeling foolish for not knowing what they're called. But, and it's, 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 it's aluminum. There's no insulation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, she's living in, my, in 10 degrees Celsius temperature in the winter because she is on a fixed income from disability and just can't afford her hydro bills. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, 
10 degrees is, is, is one thing in the prairies when it's a bitter cold, that's impossible. 10 degrees of damp, our cold, it gets right into your bones. Yeah. It's horrible. Think of the health impacts that's to people terrible. It's just who are not adequately that, that housed. People, yes. and, and people like that, because she, she actually has a place, even though it's shivery cold, mm -hmm. just hunkers down and doesn't complain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Couch and Housing Association has an information and referral service where we actually take calls and try and help people yeah. um, to get into housing and we field tenancy questions and the like. Um, last year, I recall um, a question came, came in from a woman who was living in her car and, and being treated at hospital. So, yeah, those, and those stories are heartbreaking. Right. What about children? Children? How do they fit into the struggles that, you know, parents are having who can't afford rent and single parents? Well, my background I is in social justice oh, and, right. and you know, in, in the whole issue of uh, safe communities. And yes. the one thing that we know is that when children aren't, don't get an opportunity to grow up in a stable household and in a safe community yes. where they're nurtured and where they have a sense yeah. of belonging, their prospects are less than pretty. Yeah, it's hard for them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were telling me before we started filming this that a number of people who rent have the belief that they're not entitled to vote. That was a surprise to me because every single person over the, 18, over the age of 18 can vote, right? That's right, yes. On October 20th, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, with, uh, you know, I think there are some conditions around, you know, who's considered a, yes. a resident, a citizen, and uh, around voting. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to me that, that uh, over the past few months I've had questions uh, come to me from people who are renting saying, can I vote? Yes. And I said, of course you can. <laughs> of yes. course you can. Oh, well, I didn't think I could because I'm a renter. Wow. So, That's yeah. That's a surprise to me. And if you, if you think you're not registered to vote, you can just walk in with two pieces of ID. That's my understanding. With an yes. evidence that you live in a certain address. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and simply uh, uh, look up the website of the Couch and Valley Regional District. I'm sure that the information yes. on, you know, voter eligibility yeah. is right there. So, so if, if there's a, a vote to say yes to support this and the CVRD gets a housing function and you get this money flowing in, what does it look like on your desk the morning after? <laughs> we look very busy the morning after, yes. We look What's top of that priority list? The top of the priority list yes. is, to, uh, is to start immediately and pull partners together and, right. and talk about how we can move these housing projects forward. Do you have to find the land to actually build the projects on? The, it, the journey toward affordable housing is a very complex journey right. with uh, with a whole lot of work that has to go on behind it, um, all the way from, an, you know, a nonprofit organization who wishes to become an owner and a manager of housing, yes. just 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 deciding that they're ready, right. all the way to um, what's my idea, what's my concept, have I right. researched that, um, where do I get land, uh, wh where am I going to uh, get funding for this, right. who's going to be my architect, and who's then the rezoning process, for example. Yes. It, there's a lot that has so to be looked So if a group of 10 people saying that they've stayed in a housing cooperative in Victoria and they say, let's have a former housing cooperative and they come and knock on your door saying, can you help us form a housing cooperative? It there'd would be a set of stages that you could talk them through? It would be, it would be our job to help that organization get started, yes. Excellent, yeah. yeah. And so there's a lot of learning. So obviously as much, the message you don't want is everyone to say, oh, look, the Couch and Housing Association is doing it all. We can just sit back, right? <laughs> you want everyone to be engaged in helping create, build housing. We need everyone housing. to be engaged in helping. Right. Um, no, as I said before, no one organization can do this yes. alone. It's going, to take, it's going to take all of us. And Couch and Housing Association will be the driver yes. and will be that organization that facilitates and helps move things forward. Right, and, yes. and then you can come, I saw it in the Nanaimo had a problem when they had a proposal already and a project ready, and then the neighbors said, no, no, yes. you can't do it on our backyard, we don't like it, and yes. it got scrapped. Yes. And that must be very painful to come across at the very last minute, as opposed to talking with neighbors and getting people on board earlier? Yes, that, yes, and lesson learned, and we, we've experienced the same issue yeah. in the Couch and Valley as well. It's, it's important for neighbors to be engaged. I think there's involved. a fear that, that, that the word homelessness and affordable housing get all smudged together, that anyone needing affordable housing is like the same as someone living in a tent city. And it's, the, 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 it's the, the iceberg thing you told me about. It's the most people are, I've heard of engineers who can't afford a place. 
Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, um, business people, um, people who have recently yeah. gotten jobs with local government who have moved to the valley and who can't find housing, yes. Yeah. And at the same time, I, I think it's, it's very important for us to say everyone needs a home, um, and especially um, the individual who is on the street without a roof over their head. Um, yes. We all, we all have to work And people coming together. out of care. Yes. People coming out of prisons. Yes. People coming out of hospital who our got struggles. Our seniors, our youth, uh, you know. Divorces where they happen. Suddenly yes. you had one house and now you need two. On top of all the emotional yes. distress going on. Yes. And on top of the single income the where single there income used to be two. And so you'd have thought as a, and we are one of the <laughs> most prosperous, yeah. cultivated, civilized societies on the planet. You'd have thought that we could solve this problem. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling that, that there's such a struggle going on with people who just can't find a place to live mm -hmm. or can't afford it or spending so much money struggling on this. Well, I'm an optimist at heart, Guy. Yes. I believe we can solve this yeah. problem. Surely we can, yes. Surely we can. Um, it won't happen overnight, and yes. we all have to work together. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to open up your membership to individuals and have, you know, really big raucous town hall meetings with everyone getting engaged and say, how can we do this and working together so that it spreads from just being a little nonprofit doing it to a mm -hmm. community impulse like we build a movement yes you know, people feel they're all got, they've got a role to play as part of this i well i, I may have given the misperception that we, it's only this eight member board doing yes. all of this work oh my goodness no um the first thing that that i noticed a year and a half ago when i came on board is that the communities of the Cowichan region were all talking about this issue in different in different parts of the community. Yes. And uh, the problem was that we weren't having this discussion together. There were what we call now pods of collectives. Since that time, we've built a housing coalition yes. uh, with over 20 members. We have a regional affordable housing committee yes. with uh, about 25 members who come together to do just that, to look at affordable housing projects. Yeah, but I still love to believe that it's more than all the elected councillors and the staff yes. and people in agencies, that there's ordinary people yes. and there's a place for them yes. who are otherwise sitting there waiting that someone else there solves the problem and you find a place for them to fit in and help make it happen. And that is, and that's going on now. We yeah. just finished. We just finished an initiative where we um, where we developed a youth-led vision for housing. Right. And it was the youth themselves Fantastic. who did it. Yes. And First Nations, they're struggling too with a lack of housing. Yes. So yes. Is, is part of this working with the Couch and First Nation and uh, the Shamanus and the Stuminus to collectively yes. build more affordable housing for yeah. their members too? Yes, as you know, there's, there, are, there are eight First Nations in the Cowichan region. And, I couldn't and name them all. I, I, it's I, I, important for us to work with all. All of them, Yes, right. and, uh, and some, for example... Um, Are you going right out to the Houset on the coast? Uh, not a Houset, okay. no, Nitnat. Nitnat, yeah. Nitnat okay. Yeah. So the border stops somewhere on the road to Tofino, does it? I believe so, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so there, you're working with them too? Yes. Right. Yes. It's it's a it's a it's a it's 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 still as someone who is comfortably ho housed who managed to pay off my mortgages you know mm -hmm. and who got a small inheritance at a certain point I know that a third of Canadians don't have parents who own properties they never get an inheritance and the mm -hmm. fact that we should we depend on inheritances to be able to own a property is all wrong because then you get two thirds wealthier over there and one third the separation becomes dangerous. It's just not healthy for society to have that separation between those who can never hope of owning and those who do own. Although in places like Germany, 60% of people own and rent and renting is stable for them. So a stable rental situation can be really good. Right. We, we have a very different system here in yeah. North America compared to Europe. It's a, a whole different paradigm. Well, well, Britain is mostly ownership, but I know yes. that Germany is mostly rental. I think France is high rental. I hear in places like Sweden, like they have massive cooperative housing sector. Mm -hmm. They enable people to form their own housing, housing crops. Mm -hmm. Then they're in charge of their own project and, and running it themselves and managing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can even, I mean, this is getting a bit highfalutin, but Canada's central bank, the Bank of Canada, could issue money at zero interest to have zero interest loans to finance affordable housing loans to make it easier instead of all having to pay 5% to borrow the money and building that into the cost of it all. It's doable if we thought about new economics and new ways of handling money. Well, Guy, I hope you will join us <laughs> on our journey with all of your enthusiasm yeah. and energy and ideas. Well, I'm hoping that, that viewers in general can realize that uh, we have to tackle this collectively. 
Yes. There are so many different ways from finding more secondary suites, from forming little tiny homes villages, which people have talked to me about, from having housing cooperatives, from having special housing rental projects, from the, the idea that when a developer builds a project, that maybe a quarter of the units can be affordable rental, not all just private. There's so many different ways of doing it, right? There are so many different ways of doing it. Yeah. And, and, um, and all of the, all, there's, there are just, we can get very innovative in yes. the Cowichan region. But we all have to be working yeah. from the same And I know why I hear some people yeah. saying they love living in a tiny home. They're quite happy with a tiny home, mm -hmm. but they want community. They want to mm -hmm. share it with other people, not just be hiding in the back of some five acres and hoping no one mm -hmm. finds them, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, things like building code are important. But building code, zoning regulations, uh, official community plans, you can all work, of those. We can work through that stuff yes. and make it safe, right? Yeah. That's the hope. Yes, yeah, so October 20th is the time to vote yes on all this stuff. Yeah. So what's your message to the viewers? If you've got a, a minute to give you, you want to speak straight to the camera here and say something to our viewers, right? Thank Here's you. The camera light. <laughs> everyone deserves a home. And I hope that um, everyone in the Cowichan region will join us in, uh, in making that a reality. Excellent. Well, look, thank you for your leadership in all this. And, and this thank is a handshake guy. for all the other fellow members of the Housing Association who are working on this thing thank and making you. it happen. So we really need to tackle this thing right so th this has been the show called change the world my name is Guy Dauncey when we like to sort of bring some determined energy to try and solve these problems instead of having to talk about them all the time we can actually get something done right and one of my contributions is a, is a novel I've written called journey to the future which is set in the year 2032 in Vancouver when people have worked together in a positive community oriented way to solve everything from the, the climate crisis to the homelessness crisis to tra transportation and stuff like that if you enjoy this kind of show Tune in next week and we'll have more of the same. Thanks for watching.